Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Lana. Okay, we're going to do an update to the Las Vegas real estate market today. Mm -hmm. um, this is data we get every week. We take only Las Vegas, only single family homes. We compare it week over week so we can see the changes just in the Las Vegas market. Right. So this is like when you get on a scale and you get on the same scale every day at the same time, as opposed to trying a whole bunch of different scales and picking the one that you like the best. Yeah, the problem with some of the people who just grab like generic MLS data is it's not accurate because, you know, a bunch of townhomes come on the market or a bunch of condos and it, the numbers can move dramatically. So we just pick a subset, single family homes in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and then we just track those. If we want to get more granular, we could just pick certain areas or certain price ranges, but we don't do that. Um, okay. First reason we don't do price ranges is because then as home prices go up, you can't tell because you're only using certain price ranges, mm -hmm. right? You're only using the same price. You can't tell if home prices go up. Okay. This is sort of the big story. This is the Market Action Index 45. If you've been watching this channel, it's been 45 for months. Right. So the only way that you know that we have different data every week is you have to check out the wardrobe. Yeah, the wardrobe is different, but if you look at our charts are different every week, you can see we have the date. Actually, the dates are on here, right? 45 says strong seller's market. Mm -hmm. Strong seller's market set over 7% interest rates. Okay, now we're going to jump over here, real-time market profile. Most of, now, Juana, the one thing in here is price per square foot. In June, it was 256. If in June, we figured the price per square foot would be 252 by September or October. Right. Because that's normal, normally declines mm -hmm. a bit, a couple percent. Every single year, home prices decline from April to October. Correct. Okay. They're at 260. The home prices have gone up and interest rates have gone up. Why is this? This is not behaving normally. Well, so no, nothing about this year or last year or really anything since 2020 has been normal. So uh, why should this be any different, right? Okay, so part of the reason for this is, of course, diminished inventory, uh, strong buyer demand. So those are all reasons. The other reason is that uh, the high end has not taken a breather. So the, now you, you're wondering, well, why has the high end not taken a breather with interest rates being so high? Well, because the high end is much more likely to be cash purchases, right? Yeah. So they are not impacted by interest rates in the same way that other uh, sectors might be. So what I mean by that is if you have a home and let's say it's $5 million, uh, you own it free and clear and you're going to purchase the next home and it'll be you know, five, seven million dollars, whatever it is. You're going to purchase that one, you know, cash as well. So you don't care what interest rates are. So you will continue to do transactions completely outside of the current interest rate environment. It doesn't make any difference to you. So it's not like the sellers who have these homes that are 700,000, 500,000, and they're like, oh, well, but I don't want to give up my 2%, 3% interest rate to go buy a similar home or even a more expensive home or a less expensive home, but I'm gonna to have to absorb a much higher interest rate, my payment's gonna be so much more and all that. That's outside of their concern. So because of that, uh, like I said before, Vegas has a new developing luxury market. So that's part of the reason why you're seeing this increase is because these transactions are still happening. They are completely outside of the influence of interest rates for the people that are purchasing cash. Okay. Here's the next chart, price per square foot. You can see that on today's date, well, that's September 17th, which is when the data was snapshotted. It was 236 a foot. Now remember, 2021 was pretty hot market. We were the, the housing crash sycophants were already beating their drums about the crash, the crash, the crash, it's gonna crash. 236 square foot, that's nobody can afford that, right? And here we are at 260. Home prices have gone up substantially. Mm -hmm opposite of a crash they've crashed up right so the crash is it the the price profits missed it the price profits the profits of price prognostication <laughs> have missed it the housing doomers the crash bros and the um housing market hypochondriacs <laughs> there's always something wrong with the housing market they're always find some piece of data that proves that the housing crash is imminent around the corner okay on this chart you can see that little peak which was the sort of a bunch of people um, uh, exploited the fact that interest rates were 
starting to go up. So they artificially raised their prices. They got a little more than they probably, the market would have bared normally because people were still, you know, locked in on these three, four percent loans before right. rates went above five percent. Right. So you had multiple offers. So that was also uh, part of the impact uh, that caused the homes to sell for more money than than they would normally have sold for. What's interesting is if you look at that dot from last year, prices are about the same. Mm -hmm. uh, they've actually gone up a little bit from last year. Interest rates have been six and a half to seven percent the entire time. Mm -hmm. So this shows us that in Vegas, at that interest rate with the current inventory, that's the pr going price for a house. Mm -hmm. Like we've had a year we've at, at these rates. So, oh, any day now it's going to, no, it doesn't work that way. After a year, if home prices haven't declined, they're actually going up. They're probably not going to at this interest rate. We've entered a substantially higher interest rate, mm -hmm. but I think I think we're going to get, I think we're going to get two percent lower rates before we get two percent higher rates. Mm. What do you think? I I think you're probably right on that. I mean, I, I don't see interest rates going up two percent, so then I, I would have to to go um, to go with you on that. But I do think interest rates will still go up before they go down. Okay, here's the median list price. Now, Wanda pointed out, now that blue line is the top quarter of all homes, the most expensive. Mm -hmm. If you look at the bottom three lines, that's the rest of the market, looks pretty normal. That big like downward thing you saw was just the change in mostly higher end homes. Mm -hmm. It was million dollar homes and the number of sales and the number of, you know, the less higher end home mm -hmm. selling. So, uh, it, obviously you can see this thing is far more sensitive to the time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're already at the time of year where prices in the higher end look like they're dropping a little bit. But like Wanda said, because you work in luxury, right? You're like a broker for a corporate luxury, corporate broker for a luxury firm. You're seeing like way more sales than you saw previously, right? Right. And then, you know, the other thing to keep in mind is that toward the end of the year, we see uh, sales accelerating, right? So December tends to be a pretty big month for real estate closings because people are trying to close their transactions before the end of the year and get the tax benefits. What's not included in this are all the off market. Mm -hmm. The luxury market is so hot. People are saying, I don't want to be in the MLS. I just know you have a bunch of high end buyers. I'll just let you pick one of your high end buyers to stick in the deal. You can double end it. Mm -hmm. And they don't really care. They just don't want like everyone on the planet. Like if it's a famous person, they don't want everyone in the world walking through their house. No, it's more than that. Not only do they not want everyone walking through their house, but they do not want their house out on the internet. They do not want you to be able to see their house on Zillow. So, you know, if Barack Obama puts his house up for sale, uh, he's, you're not going to see it on Zillow. Right. <laughs> um, this is inventory. Okay. This one is the most shocking to me. Want it normally this right now we're near the peak of inventory by September to early October inventory is absolutely peaked mm -hmm. and it's the one of the best times to buy a house normally because prices have dropped a bit there's more inventory so you have two things that have benefited you historically there's more homes on the market and prices are a little softer because there's less buyers so that lets you go out there and like get a smoking deal mm -hmm. right we've actually we pulled it we got uh, data from one of the once it came out, it said the first to the seventh of October were the best times to buy a house. Right, like so, statistically. Right, so Zillow has like the the best, the, like the best time to, to buy a house and the best time to sell a house um, throughout the year. So of course, the best time to um, to sell a house is there, there's a particular weekend or, or or week in April, and the best time to sell a house, according to Zillow, is something around like October first to October seventh. You know, and I'm not questioning the Zillow gods. I would never be that, um, I would never reach that high. Uh, but, uh, well, they know everything. They know everything. What your house is worth, even though they've never been in it. Right. So, but at the same time, you know, we're dealing with low inventory. We're dealing with lots of buyers chasing very few homes. So, okay, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but what are you going to get for your troubles, right? According to Zillow, you're going to get a $15,000 break. Um, so if you're out there purchasing a home and you purchase a home between October 1st and October 7th, please let us know if you got a $15,000 discount. Uh, I would love to see that. And what's that based on? Because you can't go list price because, right, that's shot in the dark. Nobody well, knows really. Right. I think it's, you maybe get $15,000 off what you would have got if you 
bought it in April, <laughs> right? Okay, this is what's interesting though about this inventory chart. Inventory climbs up and then it starts to draw down as more buyers flood into the market because mm -hmm. they actually do start in the late fall and winter. Mm -hmm. The buyers start buying up inventory, right? Well, so, right, so that drawdown in inventory happens for two reasons. One, because buyers come back, like I said, uh, because they're trying to close before the end of the year to get whatever tax benefits there are. And then the other reason is because sellers take their homes off the market because they are, you know, they have family coming over for the holidays, whatever their holiday reasons are. So we have less inventory, again, more buyers. Or they delay listing the house. Or they delay listing the house. Okay. But same net effect of less inventory and more buyers. Okay. We are at the lowest ever recorded on this. We don't have a large, robust number of homes that people can go, oh, it's October 1st. I'm going to go out there and get me a smoking deal. I'll give you a real life example. We bought an investment property less than two years ago mm -hmm. for 320. Mm -hmm. It was a smoking deal. I'm telling you it was a smoking deal at 320. We cannot touch today. A similar house for under 400000 Would mm -hmm. you say that's accurate? It is. You know, what's interesting is that the time we got it for three for, for three twenty, and it wasn't necessarily the best deal out there. It was kind of the going rate. Uh, we didn't get a discount or anything. It was just a situation where, again, it was an off-market property. We got it at market value, but we didn't have to compete with everybody else and go through all the hassles. So that was kind of what um, what our discount was, right? That we didn't have to go through all the hassles. However, like Todd said, if we were to look at that property today, we couldn't touch it for less than 400000 Which is ridiculous because interest rates back then were still, I mean, this was before, interest rates were certainly in the upper threes. Mm -hmm. They hadn't gone to 4% yet. Mm -hmm. So an average buyer could have come up and may, offered more because their payment wouldn't have been that bad. So even today with seven plus percent, you know, people are still selling houses like that for 400,000. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is those houses don't exist because you can see that we don't have the inventory for the houses. Right. Right? Yep. The other thing is too, we've talked about picking up a couple more, mm -hmm. right? But how does that work when there are just not enough houses to pick from? Because the problem is well, before we wait until inventory builds up and then we kind of go pick a couple that we, that we think are really good. Now it's kind of like we're just sort of stuck if we want to buy something. We kind of have, we just, we don't have a lot of choices. We don't have a lot of choices and we're not the only ones. Neither do other owner occupants or other investors. So it's kind of funny because I get uh, text messages every day from investors saying, hey, do you have anything off market? Uh, you know, I'd love to, to buy something. And my answer back is, I don't have anything off market right now, but if you come across something off market that doesn't fit your criteria and you want to share, please do, because I might buy it. <laughs> right. I know. That's funny uh, that the non-MLS people hustling for properties mm -hmm. is pretty hard because people can't just go out there and find something. There's right. literally nothing to buy right now, mm -hmm. which is the reason home prices are going up. Uh, so I don't know, maybe if we get some event happens, Black Swan event, a bunch of houses come on in Vegas. But the other thing too in Vegas is economy is robust and growing. Mm -hmm. Two new hotels are opening, Fountain Blue, mm -hmm. Durango Station, both hiring thousands of people. Mm -hmm. um, Grand Prix is going to add a ton of part-time jobs, but that's going to bring a ton of money in. Mm -hmm. Tickets right now, the cheapest ticket you can get to go to the Grand Prix, Grand Prix three-day event. This is the Formula One racing. Two grand mm -hmm. to sit in bleachers. Mm -hmm. You just get to sit in the bleachers for two grand. Right, and it's November, and it's gonna be chilly. <laughs> it'll be cool. It'll be it won't be a hundred. It'll be below hundred for sure. <laughs> no, it'll, it, November's pretty cool. So, um, if, of course, you're coming from from a really cold place, you will think that it's perfectly comfortable. But the rest of us are gonna be pretty bundled up. If you come from Michigan, bring your shorts. You'll <laughs> think it's super warm here. Um, so, bottom line, one. Let's talk about Vegas for the next. Like, what does it look like next spring if we don't add more properties? And then in, let's say interest rates are back to six and a half or six percent. And we still only have, you know, 2000 houses in Vegas because inventory basically ticked up 26 homes. There's 26 homes more on the market today than there were a week ago. But remember, there's over 400,000 houses in all of Las Vegas. Right. So. That's nothing. I mean, it's statistically zero. Yeah, statistically irrelevant. Um, so to answer your question, what will it be like in the spring if inventory is the way it's been? Uh, you know, I think there will be even less inventory, to be honest with you, because okay. the longer this uh, this goes on, 
the more buyers are going to be um, less picky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so they will just take whatever there is and just suck it up kind of thing. Uh, you know, I think Home Depot is going to do quite well. Uh, Lowe's and contractors, those people will be pretty happy because people will have to settle. So that means that they will have to do renovations to make the house that they purchase um, into the home that they would like to live in. And I do acknowledge that uh, the payments are higher than than they would have expected a couple of years ago. So that does cut into their renovation budgets. I do acknowledge all that. But at the same time, people do have to live somewhere and they do have to make it comfortable for themselves. Uh, anecdotal information. Of course, a lot of the people don't know we've sold over 3,000 houses in Vegas, listing them, li listing them for the, the seller. Mm -hmm. In the last week, we've had one person reach out saying they're considering selling a house in the next few months. And then everybody else is, we're all buying houses. <laughs> we're investors buying houses. We're buying houses to live in. Um, what do you think is causing that? Because that's, we're used to seeing more people come to us to sell than buy. And now everyone wants to buy. And we're like, oh, great. Now we, all these people are trying to buy houses in Vegas. And, you know, and the other thing too, though, it's anecdotal as well. Everybody's like, the loan's not a problem because I'm either buying cash or putting so much down, it won't be a big deal. Right. So I think it's pretty much the same story across the country, right? Right. Um, more buyers chasing fewer homes. Okay, the last thing, anecdotal, then I'll let you end the video. I'm hearing over and over people that comment, people in other forms of media state, I have been saving for a house for three years now, mm -hmm. and I have so much money that I'm going to be putting down on the house. Mm -hmm. that I have. It opens up like the number of houses I can buy. Mm -hmm. uh, that Forget interest rates. They have people who are accumulating money. They don't have anything to do with it. We know that there's a record money that are in money market funds, which can be pulled out immediately, right? People are just sticking cash in money markets because they pay 5%. And that household checkable wealth is the highest it's been in probably ever, mm -hmm. like $3 trillion of cash and checkable wealth that people have in bank accounts. Mm -hmm. Your question? No, I'm just saying is what does that look like over the next maybe a year in Vegas or the rest of the country with people buying real estate. The same thing that I've said, you know, you're going to have more people chasing fewer homes. That's yeah. it. Okay. Uh, and you know, here's the thing. Um, there really are not a lot of investment choices, guys. I mean, let's face it. We've got stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and houses. I mean, that's what most of us invest in. Yes. You know, there, there is fine art. Yes. There are all kinds of other exotic types of investment gold right? silver bitcoin gold according silver to robert bitcoin, kiyosaki yes. who said the housing market is going to crash yes. but you know for most of us right for most of us most of us will invest in stocks bonds mutual funds uh money markets cds maybe uh right. and then real estate there's really not much else because these are things that most of us can understand most of us that are accessible to most of us, right? Most of us cannot go out and purchase a Picasso and have that be our investment. Picasso. Uh, that's, that's not the way most of us roll, right? No. Uh, so we're talking about investments that are accessible to most of us. And, and because of that, real estate plays an outsized um, role in people's investment portfolios between their primary residence and between maybe a couple of rentals. People are... Um, are in the real estate market. And like Todd said, people are accumulating cash and they have to put it somewhere. They have to put it to work because inflation is, is a thief. And the only way to keep the thief at bay is to invest the money. Yeah, I agree. That's it. So, so what do you think? Um, you don't have to agree with us. You do need to leave us a comment to tell us where you're watching from and what you think. We're interested in your thoughts and your opinions. Please um, jot us a note. We appreciate it. Remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get a, a reminder every time we put out a new awesome video. And share the video and help us grow the channel. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.